investigation. And oh, wow, look at that. There were more non-disclosure agreements and more payments uh, given to other women, totaling over $12 million. Stephanie, Vince McMahon's daughter, left the company right, right before the allegations came out. But eventually, it was either, hey, Vince, step down or you're going to be fired. Uh, so Vince McMahon stepped down as, ch as chairman and CEO of WWE. And the company made Stephanie the co-CEO of WWE because a woman can't be CEO. We all know that. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> nice. It, so Stephanie was made the co-CEO of the company along with Nick Khan, not to be confused with Tony Khan, who is the CEO of AEW. So since Vince McMahon left, so, so Stephanie's is, husband... So is Shane just kind of like the Eric Trump? Yeah. Okay. Basically, well, yeah. Like yeah. Because so, I notice his name is not coming up in this conversation. No, it is not. It is all. not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the way that I see it, Stephanie McMahon and uh, Shane, Shane O'Mac have a relationship that's akin to Mike and Joel in Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. We're on completely opposite sides. You'll never see us together. We don't talk to each other. We'll never be seen at functions. I'm doing my own thing over here. You're doing your own thing over here. Hey, we don't hate each other. I don't know where those rumors came came about. Yeah. We don't hate each other. We'll just never be seen. He, he, he's 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 gone. He, okay, it's okay. surprising. He's just stepped away. Okay, so it's more akin to me. Yeah. So since Vince left, Stephanie's husband Triple H took over the creative side of the company, and wow. Who would have thought that not having a far-right racist billionaire asshat in charge of creative would be a good thing for the company? Morale is up, stock prices are up, live attendance is up. Uh, there are actual plot lines that make sense. Yeah. There's actual storytelling that isn't coming from a far-right racist billionaire asshat. Um, and things are looking really good for the WWE. So of course. Here comes Vince McMahon to fuck it all up. On December 13th of this month, the Wall Street Journal released a follow-up article on Vince, the same day that Vice released a feature film-length documentary called The Nine Lives of Vince McMahon. And from this comes news of two different women who are currently suing Vince McMahon for sexual assault. He is currently uh, being sued twice by two separate women who claimed that on two different occasions, Vince McMahon sexually assaulted him. So how is old Vinnie Mac taking the news? He, not only does he deny the allegations, not only does he refuse to give out payments to these two women, but of course, he's planning a comeback. Okay. Because everyone knows that professional wrestlers can't just retire. No. So according to his friends, and that's a big news thing there, Vince McMahon has friends. According to his friends, Vince thinks that he never should have stepped down, that the news against him would have blown over eventually, and he is hoping to return to the company soon. That's some big Trump energy right there, isn't yes. it? That's some Trump energy. A 77-year-old man with numerous sexual assault allegations wants to take his company back. And I just, As, and I'm sorry, I want to take a second since you brought it up to just say thank you. Thank you for finally doing something. Your trading cards. I, I get a little... Such, such beauty in absurdity. The great thing about it what is that what horrible is horrible disillusion. 
the best thing is that he's just selling NFTs, but he also knows that his supporters, his base, are old as freaking dirt. So he's calling them digital trading cards because there's no way that like 89 year old that the 89 Trump year old supporter in Alabama will know what the hell an NFT is. So it's Donald Trump digital trading cards. Donald Trump is literally becoming a parody of Donald Trump. So like if I made fun of Donald Trump, what Donald Trump is doing now is basically that like for his announcement about his NFTs, he literally hello it's your favorite president, Donald Trump. Baby. You love me. You, I'm your favorite president. Better than Lincoln. Better than Washington, I hope. And it's like, oh my God, you are a parody of oh, yourself no. at this point. Oh, go, go back and watch the commercial again. Yes, Jeez. he's saying all that. But it is so... Just, just dripping with self-doubt throughout the whole... Thing. It he has fucking beautiful. It's obvious he has no idea what an NFT is, what he's selling. He's like, it's you, funny you, because he's you could win dinner with me. Okay, maybe that's not such a prize. Yeah, he has. Uh, yeah, no, he's like, obviously he's never read the script before. Obviously, it's pretty freaking hilarious. So after news of Vince McMahon's hopeful comeback broke. WWE stock prices fell by 2%. And the scuttlebutt on the interwebs is that no one in the WWE wants Vince McMahon back. And oh! Oh, this has been a great year for people who hate Vince McMahon. It really has. I love this story. Vince McMahon is an asshole and wrestling is better without him. So. This is just my story of the year. Uh, meanwhile, in political news, the media is just tripping over each other to once again report for the 300th time, oh, it looks like this is the final nail in Donald Trump's coffin. His political future is no doubt over. You've said that 299 times before this point. I need you to shut your mouth. Saying it since fucking 2016. Everything was going to get Donald Trump. Everything. Hey, nice outfit. You you should have. It, Eleanor and I had a green party where we got a bunch of green dolls and we ate a bunch of green candy and green food, and we summoned Bloody Mary. Everyone knows Bloody Mary's green, and so you coming in with this outfit is just oh man. I wish I had that for the green party that we threw a uh, night or two ago. Uh he literally announced his first run for president by coming down a gold escalator and saying, I'm running for president of these United States. Also, fuck Mexicans. They're all rapists. And the news just said, oh, my goodness. He's never going to be president. Yeah. And they just kept saying that over and over again, numerous times a week. And just the fact that they're saying it right now, I need you to shut your mouth. Yeah. You know? I need you all to shut your mouth. Yeah, now that he's not going to be president for the second fucking time. Yeah. This year Which was I such a... I cannot understand how that can... Kill. We really have... Laws are just for us. Laws yep. are not for them yep. at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, trust me, I've been thinking about that all year. <laughs> the things that Donald Trump got away with, it's freaking astounding uh -huh. it is literally astounding all of them yeah all of it's them. ridiculous I mean it's, I mean it's not just trump is the biggest clown in the car you yeah. know yeah but it's not like he's the only one and it's yeah Nancy Pelosi stepping down almost made it too. you know yeah. like oh my god she was such a great politician no bitch who served decades in this government? Decades. Yeah. You, Joe Biden, a whole fucking lot of them. Okay? And we are on the brink of our country collapsing into a fascist state and mm -hmm. the extinction of the human species. Maybe your leadership wasn't that fucking good. 
Yeah. You know, what yeah. do you think? I mean, you were a great leader and, and this is where you brought us? One of my one of my favorite pastimes is scrolling through Twitter, finding a airtight fact check about something in politics, and then heading over to Facebook land of 80 year olds and finding people who think that the fake thing is true and then hitting them with a brutal fact check and just waiting for people to attack me. It's one of my favorite pastimes. I do it all the time. Yeah. And uh, one thing that's upsetting me right now is that so many people on the facey books has been attacking joe biden how dare you how dare you get uh wnba player Brittany grimer out of a russian prison and let this former marine stay in there how dare you and it's like okay but he went into a russian jail in 2018 do you yeah. know who was president then yeah. in 2018 and 2019? So shut your mouth now you care that he hasn't yeah. been let go. Yeah. Like you need First to shut time it. I'm hearing about this fucking guy. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Okay. I've got an, I've got, but, I've but, got a bit but of news. On the other, on the other side, I am, I am not going to jump up and down and, lick Joe Biden's sphincter because god damn it this is simply what I expect of you. Yeah. This is the bare fucking minimum. If one of our citizens are in a Russian jail, you get them the fuck out. That's the goddamn yeah. job. Yeah. It's also so upsetting to me I'm not going to bend that, over like... backwards and paint paintings of Joe Biden with fucking halos <laughs> over his head. Yeah. We're doing the baseline. Yeah, the, minute the bare minimum. The bare minimum. Okay, so this next this next bit of news is serious. I need to get my serious face on. Okay. I'm going to be bringing the podcast down a little bit, okay, Bunny? We are going to get very it. serious. All right, hold on, hold okay. on. Ten minute oh, warning. Me We're getting... Okay. We're gonna get, I've got two serious bits of news. Very serious. Okay? All right. You ready? Okay. I think so. In recent extremely sad news, this is the saddest news that you will hear all year 2022. This is the saddest bit of news. I'm being very serious. I know you think I'm doing a bit. I'm not doing a bit. There, this isn't funny. In extremely sad news, a West Virginia man was recently arrested and charged with six counts of animal abuse. He was caught shooting six puppies in the head and throwing their carcasses over a cliff. Of course, this story isn't funny. I did laugh pretty hard when I read it, but l hear me out, okay, Bunny? What I was thinking was, when I laughed at this news story, what I was thinking was, how do you explain this in a way that makes you innocent? Because no matter what someone, like, what is this guy's story? So I automatically thought of this West Virginia man like, well... <laughs> I live in West Virginia, so of course I was taking my gun out for a walk when suddenly there was a rustle in the bushes. Suddenly I'm surrounded by 40 rabid puppies yes. with knives. I managed to fight six of them off, and that caused the others to be. It, it, so I was trying to think of like, but then I started thinking of the logistics of the six dead puppies, Bunny. How would you go about it? Say you have to kill six puppies. How would you go about it? Would you put them all in a pen? Are they running? Are they running around? Do you have them in a box? Do you have them in a bag, a burlap sack? Well, well, he threw over the cliff after shooting them. Yeah, I, I the the shooting seems a little pointless. I think throwing them over the 
could have done it. That's a good point. He could have turned it into a game like, uh, what is it, when the disc clear and the oh, disc flies oh, yeah. into the air and then you shoot that. You could have made it like a game, like a target game. But like, here's like, the thing. Like, so, I, I would have to, uh, if for some reason I was in a position where I was forced to Maxwell, kill. you are laughing at puppies dying and it is very offensive. It is not cool because there's nothing funny about this. Someone throwing puppies in the air. Clear. I would. Oh, I would. I would, ha- I would have to go for stop throwing them off. The- I would have to like detach and minimize what is going on as much as you. Oh. And then it's like, do you do it one each, or do you gr- do you think you could? Managed to throw all six of them at the same time. You can tie their tails together, make them into a rat king. Yeah. Here's the thing. I was thinking of Deadpool, too. Do you think you could get all six with one bullet? They are small. Yeah. I was just thinking of the logistics of, let's say you've only got two bullets. I I would think that, like, it's pro- it's pretty improbable that you could kill, you could shoot six puppies in the head with one bullet. But... There is a better chance if you do three and three, one bullet for three and the other bullet for three. That one, I think, is more doable. But then I decided to read the entirety of the article, Bunny, and, and hear, hear this. Um, the man was found out about his crimes when hikers nearby heard whimpers and went to the sounds and found that... Um, the puppies were alive and bleeding to death from the head. One was already dead. One died on the way to the hospital, and the remaining four survived but were in so much pain that they were euthanized due to their serious injuries. He not only he only killed one immediately. How do you not automatically kill a puppy with a gunshot to the head? Wow, 40-year-old Jeremy Smallwood of West Virginia, not only did you do a horrific crime, how were you bad at it? Uh, Like, completely incompetent, yeah. That's like, I've got this puppy. I'm going to shoot it in the head. I wounded it. Let me try it again. All right. It's starting to be injured. Oh, look at this. I've got this gerbil. I mean, this I'm is gonna, a position. I'm going to tase it. Okay, it's starting to get hurt. This how is do a you... position I never want to find myself in, but I do believe if I ever find myself in that position, well, you have I to would kill be six successful puppies. at killing six puppies. How do you shoot? Six puppies in the head? I don't see myself failing at that. You shoot six puppies in the head. You throw the six puppies off of a cliff, and five of them are alive enough to call for help. You are so bad at shooting puppies in the head. Yeah. What the heck, 40-year-old Jeremy Smallwood of West Virginia? And is it really better a at cliff, puppies. or are you exaggerating? Like I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe it was maybe a you precipice. threw them off the curb. I don't know. I don't know. I was I've been thinking about that. I want to go to the scene and uh, you know do like a crime scene recreation. Huh. Figure out exactly what happened. Also, uh, we've got two minutes and forty five seconds until Zoom restarts everything. Can you not press your fake cash register near the podcast? That sound is just triggering to me. I know I'm springing this on you, Bunny. Um, And I apologize, but with a small amount of time left, I just want to make this announcement about the future of this podcast. Okay. Uh. I, I've been through a lot in 2022. It's been a year of pain and it's been a year of growth. I've done a lot of changing and, it, you know, there's a new year coming up and I need to focus on myself. 
I need to focus on who I am and who I am becoming, who I am going to be. And so it's difficult to say this because we have this film podcast and people come to it for entertainment and for movie reviews. And, and it's an important part of me for me to go out and see new movies and, and to review films and to talk about it here. It's very important to me. So it's difficult for me to say this, but um, I will not be watching the new fucking avatar movie <laughs> at all. I won't be watching it. You can't make me watch it. I know it's the big new movie. Fuck you. I'm not seeing Avatar. I'm, okay, I'm I, not. I thought you were you were trying to time it, but that's what I thought you were. Oh, that would have been funny. Yeah, that would have been even better. But and no, I I'm not, just want to say. There it goes. Yeah. Uh. So. That's been our monologue. We are going to take a short break because we do this on Zoom and now we have less than a minute. <coughs> when we come back, it's going to be time for historic approximations or as we call it, hop! Close your mouth when you have that food in there. Because that was gross, dude. That was gross. You know that cartoon larva with the with the bugs? It looks like you, you, you're eating the characters. We are going to be talking about the history of hip hop and how it is somehow tied to Charles Rocket from the worst season of Saturday Night Live. Okay. How the birth of hip hop is somehow tied in a uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon way to Charles Rocket, the uh, saddest, the uh, most hilarious crash and burn story in the history of Saturday Night Live. So we'll be. 